Hey guys, what's up? You're watching Alien Rafa's Tech Channel in China and today we are at the WAIC, the World Artificial Intelligence Conference here in Shanghai. We're going to tell you a little bit um, about the news features in tech and artificial intelligence here from Shanghai and I just want to say, let's don't talk too long, let's walk over the trade fair and let's go. Let's go, perfect. We are now here at the IAM booth and you still remember IAM from the Shanghai Auto Expo where we went uh, in March, April time. And this is the IAM LS7. sized SUV, it will be a full electric car, but unfortunately not on the market yet. So this is a prototype, we can't see the inside and they say they will have it available by 2022. So we are also trying to get an interview with one of the members here working for the IAM. Let's see if we can and we can interview about the car. All right, we got some background information here on the L7. So this car will be available from uh, next year in Q1. And we're going to have a range of around 600 kilometers, 700 uh, horsepower. And um, it will be mostly targeting young families. It will be cheaper than the price for uh, Neo cars, for example. But we did the test for the EC6, maybe you remember. Uh, if not, if you want to see the video, you can just see it right now. You can just click it. And um, this car in here will be priced. Uh, 400,000 RMB, which is around 50,000 euros, 55,000 US dollars, and will be capable of uh, full autonomous driving. So we're excited to see it. Maybe we can get a test drive next year. And um, I would say let's just get over to the midsize SUV. So let's go. So we got the information here for this car. It's going to be available in around two years. It's a pure concept car. So um, it's still like the information is a little bit vague still, but it will also be capable of full autonomous driving and it will be available with uh, wireless charging, which is very interesting. So you can basically have a charging pad in your garage and just drive your car over the charging pad and going to charge overnight. Very interesting concept. You don't need a, a charging cable. So we're quite excited to see about this, but uh, we still have to be patient for We're now here at the booth of uh, Pony. Pony is one of the world leading uh, providers of autonomous driving solutions. And we can here see one of their newest cars, which is already available as a driverless taxi in Guangzhou. And uh, you can use this car by their own uh, app and uh, drive within a range of 100 square kilometers. So this is already available. And uh, then over there, we have their newest truck. Um, maybe Andy, you can just film over there. This truck already got the license registration. Guangzhou. Uh, you can see the, the lighter sensors in here. So we got two lighter sensors at both sides. And uh, this car actually is already in service. So it's got uh, official license plate and they're already customers which are using this truck to provide um, logistic services down in Guangzhou. So this car is actually um, totally autonomously driving on the streets here in China, which is uh, quite, uh, quite amazing. So maybe we can now try to get someone on Pony to give us a small interview and tell us a little bit more about uh, the software and uh, the things they want to do in future. Here we can see uh, we have uh, four types of sensors. Here we can see we have uh, one, uh, three, uh, six, ten, uh, Celsius uh, light up here. And we have one uh, 80 Celsius light up here. Also we have uh, two front uh, radar, one light radar and one uh, rear radar here. Also, we have uh, seven cameras, three cameras in front, one left, one right, and one rear. Also, we have uh, Pony Self Development uh, camera 
that, that, okay. Also, we have uh, two, uh, like this we call B-Pearl LiDAR here in the left front. Also, another same one in the right front. Uh, in Pony AI, we are now uh, doing research and development uh, as a global uh, tech uh, company. We are uh, testing and uh, measuring our performance in both China and uh, the US. In China, we are uh, trying to, you know, uh, providing the robot taxi service in uh, uh, super big cities like uh, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. Uh, and in the US, we are testing our vehicles in uh, California, in Fremont. Also, we have uh, a few uh, vehicles in Irwin. So you, you, you can uh, see that uh, as a global autonomous uh, company, so we are trying to provide and we are trying to, you know, like uh, to make our vehicle can run a very, uh, very, uh, uh, very good in different cities, in different countries. And uh, we are trying to, you know, to have our uh, vehicles uh, uh, to facilitate in different cars uh, in different countries. Uh, are you also planning to expand to Europe? Uh, because we are German, so we are very interested. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, currently, we do not have any vehicles in Europe. Uh, but maybe in future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we have. Uh, a few uh, collaborations uh, with many, you know, car providers. So, so, who are you cooperating with mainly? So, is it all different depending on the country, or? Uh, yeah, it, it depends mainly, uh, mainly, uh, you know, uh, because uh, for the, you know, in China we may have a, a, a lot of, uh, yeah, yeah, Chinese. Uh, vehicle factories, a lot of collaborators, and uh, in the U.S. we have a few, and uh, uh, maybe in, in Japan, in Europe, uh, in the future, we, we will have a few more uh, collaborators there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So that, that was perfect in English, so I don't even need to translate. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, David. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much. That was so much from Pony here. So uh, we hope this is interesting for you. And I would just say, let's go to the next booth. Okay, so we are here now at the Inceptio booth and you could please tell a little bit about your new invention, the self-driving truck. So as for the uh, Inceptio, yeah. we are focusing on to provide it autonomous driving technology for the uh, Chinese market, uh, focusing on the, um, on the trailers. Okay. So our strategical company is from Dongfeng okay. and also the Sino truck, we call it so we are co-work for the autonomous driving technology design. So you could see we got the radar, uh, we got the lidar, yeah. so we got the camera, also we got the electromagnetic radar. Okay. So to um, to get the um, the sensing system for the distance. Yes, of course. So for the vision system. Lidar system and radar system is is from front detection. Okay, so you could detect uh, front objects. And also, we got the, the side, the blind side detection. Okay, also from the radar. Ah, okay, from radar yeah. detection. Okay, understand. Also for the backward. Yeah, from the side mirror. Yeah. Yes, if you are, you would like to uh, from number one to number two. Yeah. So the Backward detection, you will see other uh, objects is coming. Okay, so so is this car currently already available in in China? Is this truck available now? Yes, our uh, our target date for the mass production is the end of this year. Okay, for for both OEM. Okay, Dongfeng and Zhongqi. Yeah, but this one is not electric or hybrid yet. The car, right? It's a normal standard petrol yes. truck. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. Okay, so do you have any plans for the future, like for the next years, what you still want to develop? Because I think you still need to have a driver right inside sitting in the yeah. car. So it's not allowed 
to try this out anyone sitting inside? Yes, up to now we are going to do the uh, level 3 autonomous driving okay. traders. So uh, as for the next level, it is just in our strategy. But, but but not right now. Okay. Well, yep. What exactly means level three? Level three is without anyone driving, uh, so it's fully automatic. Yeah, for North America and also for China, the the um, they got their own standard to explain different levels to describe the, the AD, so okay. autonomous driving. So L three in our definition or in a, a common a common sense, we yeah. could say we got a driver, and in most of scenarios. It can driven by system. Okay, okay. That's, that's quite amazing. Yes, but with those lanes, I mean road lanes, yeah. or um, in, dif in difficult conditions, human is, uh, should be standby to um, take over the vehicle. Yeah, I understand, especially yeah. also the road traffic regulation. It's still very difficult nowadays to introduce vehicles like this. Yeah, so right? that's why we got a travel morning system. system yeah. in in, in both of the vehicles. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, this is the booth here of Meituan uh, delivery, and uh, we got a quite funny Meituan delivery vehicle in here. So we can see they got uh, the introduction here. So we got uh, three LiDAR sensors on the roof of it and uh, nine cameras and over 19 speakers in order to orient itself. And it's gonna be um, designed for a range of about three kilometers. So this vehicle is gonna to come to the restaurant. The restaurant um, will just put the stuff that you ordered into the car that will capture it up and then it's gonna to drive to your final destination. So maybe to an office or someplace where it can be easily deloaded and easily, uh, which is easily accessible. So here you can also see the standard test from it. We have the shop and the new alternative is now to have a drone to bring it directly to your office or to your home. Once it arrived at your office, we have this very special roboter who can pick it up and get it directly to your hotel room or to your office. Otherwise, if it's a big company area, you can also have these two self-driving cars who can drive around three kilometers. So within a big company complex, these are perfect. And this here is the normal Meituan standard driver that's available now in China already since many years. Yeah, Meituan is really trying to develop new technologies and new artificial intelligence to deliver your product as fast as possible. And with all these new technologies, it makes life so much more convenient and so much faster, which is very important here in China. Your time for a quick interview. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the company when you were founded and what products you offer. Yeah, sure. So it's nice to have me here. So uh, Transworld was founded in 2013. So first, uh, from the start, we uh, we invested in the uh, field of wait, big data. Uh, we that is, we make the big data platform to hold large amount volume of data, and also we. Uh, we build data models for different kinds of business solutions and then and two years later we have formed our artificial intelligence team that is also we provide you with uh, artificial intelligence uh, platform for building models and also the machine learning uh, yeah. functionalities and uh, for the last part we also have a, a private a container cloud platform that is they can work as a private cloud for big corporations. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any plans for the future now to develop? What, what is the future plan for the next two, three years? Yeah. So the future plan is uh, the one as always we have persuaded that is we will make the best products in China and even in other part of the uh, globe. Yeah. And also we are trying to expand our business with more of uh, more partners and more customers and users. 
you currently already exporting into other countries? Is your product, your service available in the US or for example in Europe? Uh, yes, we have some business in, uh, in the US and also in Canada. Uh, we have some offices in Toronto and uh, in the other parts. And for the overseas official branches, we have a Singapore office okay. that covers the business in Singapore and the other uh, Southeast Asia countries. And then the other thing is your colleague told me you were also responsible for developing this uh, health code, right? Uh, health code, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so is this the health code I can find now on Alibaba and Tencent? Uh, yes, that's the one you can find in, in Alipay. I will show you this one. So the health code I'm showing right now is developed by uh, Transwarp. That means we uh, they use our database to hold data of more than three, uh, 13 million uh, populations. Okay. And also the logic to define whether I'm green, uh, that mean, which means safe, and also the yellow and the red, uh, that uh, means the dangerous person from dangerous areas. Yeah. So we got these tasks. Uh, one year before, uh, that's uh, around 2020 uh, January. Yeah. So when the uh, pandemic first outbreaks, and then we got this job and we finished building the database and also the logic in within two days. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have to say it's a great invention because I came back from Germany as well last year in October mm -hmm. when my health code was red. Once I finished the quarantine, mm -hmm. it was green. And then when you go to shopping malls, you go to restaurants, you show your QR code. It's, it's super great. Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much for your time, Lee. Thank you, thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you. Now we are here at the Shanghai Chuangzi International Company. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your company, yeah. when you were founded and what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, so, so we're, we've been founded for around three years already. So what we specialize in is uh, we do prop tech. So as you know, Shanghai has multiple uh, skyscrapers, large buildings. And the existing infrastructure is because it's built in the early 90s. So everything is still relatively brand new compared to most of the Western world. But uh, we're looking at the next frontier at our company and then we're seeing that uh, we're leveraging data as well as artificial intelligence can really help to improve uh, kind of the work environment as well as the daily environment of all the people who are ha ha inhabiting the uh, the building next that we've worked on right so you see that the import export convention exactly, center is yeah, one yeah. of them as well as Lansing building which is uh, located in the heart of uh, Shanghai right as well as even uh, the building that we're in right now the exactly, convention center exactly. is actually one of our projects as well yeah, I have seen over there as well. You have some technology for facial recognition yeah. and for data. Yeah, yeah. Is this yeah. also something you developed this year or for long term already? Yeah, so, so, so that is primarily that holds all this tech together, right? So we have the hardware and of course you need the software to go with it. So we have multiple hardware parts right now. So there's uh, things that you can put into the pipeline to manage the electricity, the water, the sewage of the building, right? And then along with that, you need some, you need a Kanban or something to be able to uh, look at all the data. So right now, what, what the software part is primarily used for is for uh, kind of the uh, the people who are manage the management of these buildings, right? So they need to be able to know that, oh, say, um, the, the janitorial staff on the fourth floor is uh, not taking the trash out properly. They're just leaving it in the stairwell or something. We have the ability through the, the platform to notify the management team that, hey, on the fourth floor, someone is misusing uh, the bathroom, misusing, throwing trash on the floor. So it has the ability to detect that very in a very timely manner. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time in the interview. Perfect. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for watching. That was basically our small tour here in the WAIC. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and found the interviews quite interesting. So we'd like to thank you for watching until the end, hopefully. And if you like our content, if you like what we do here in uh, Shanghai or in China in general, please uh, hit the subscribe button and give us a like for this video if you're happy with it. So I would say I'll uh, see you next time. And uh, thank you guys for watching the video and see you next time. Bye bye.